We're loop invariant, so we're doing these slides. And we're going to start with actions versus assertions. And uh, here, iterative slides. Yeah, there we go. So this is just saying, uh, you know, sometimes as a, as a non rule follower, I can say about the people who follow the rules. And, uh, and so we could say, it was just says, well, I've been teaching this logic course and there I don't follow the rules and people say I should. So that's, that was getting me, getting me more going. So, but here's one sort of example that I can teach you uh, how to factor here. I can teach. So here's a possible algorithm, right? I give you an integer and you need to factor it. So, so what, so if I give you the answer, you can verify it, right? The goal is to take this integer, say 12, and break it into its factors. You multiply it, you see, yes, I got the right answer. Right, and here's a bigger example. Can you factor that? It factors into these, you can test it. Now, if on a test I, I gave you a new number and asked you to factor it, would you be able to factor it? No, I wouldn't be able to factor it either, but it's just, you can, so if I were to give you an algorithm to sort of argue that it works, that's not teaching you how to come up with your own algorithm, right? All right, so I also like teaching things in different, from different vantage points, right? We can, it might feel sometimes that we go over and over the same topic over and over again. And, and quite frankly, the reason I do that is because um, I have a bit of a PowerPoint slide making addiction. And when my class failed miserably, then I, I really, you know, I, I managed my anxiety about that by making more slides for the next year. And so maybe we can think at some point, hey, dude, you got too many slides here. But also, there is different ways of looking at the same thing. And you might think, oh, this is easy, but I'm also giving you a different perspective to the same thing. All right, so try to, try to work on it. If you don't know Escher, right, he's brilliant, right? Um, so here's the first way of looking at two different things. An algorithm you can think of as um, a sequence of actions, right? You, you bring in this integer, you, you add five to it, you, you do this to it, you do that to it, it's a sequence of actions. And uh, another possibility is a sequence of, of sort of landmarks or images of where you are, right? And this story here, I don't really tell you the actions, I just tell you where the algorithm was, right? I was born in Washington, I grew up in Waterloo, did graduate school at U of T, did a postdoc in San Francisco, and now I'm at York, right? It's a sequence of, of pictures. And so the first whole section of the course is we're going to pretty much throw away actions. And we're just going to look at sequences of pictures. All right. So let's start with some pictures. The first picture is what's true when we start this algorithm. All right, all, all the algorithms that we're gonna be focused on are uh, things that run in the background forever. They're things where you have an input, there's a requirement of that input, you compute it for a while, you compute an output, you output the output, right? That's, that's what we're doing here. And so uh, the first step is what do we know about the input? And that's called a precondition. And there should be no action involved in it. It should be a picture of what's true about your input. And in this case, the picture is that I have an array of any values, right? And here I didn't really even tell you whether they're integers or reals, or maybe they're even elephants. I don't know, right? 
We got, we got N, an array of N things. And then I, the post condition is a, is a picture of what's true when you end, right? In this case, you got the same N numbers, but, uh, oh no, it's the wrong algorithm. See, I have to read my own slides. Uh, the require, the require, the, the, what we're returning is the maximum. All right? Actually, one thing that might help you guys is, is I haven't talked through this algorithm in a year or so, and so like, it will slow me down, which is good for you. Right? All right, so, oh, so what's, what's in between the precondition and the postcondition? Same time as active and contract. Right, the contract is if, if the world gives you an input that needs to bring condition, then at the end of your code you have to provide this post condition. Right? And and we could just throw some code at you and say, see, it works, and we go on to the next algorithm. Right? Um, first off, uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to push the purpose of 1090, assuming you all took it, but I found, you know, I teach uh, the 2001 and this course and a bunch of courses, and I find that people struggle. And when I really kind of boil down to what are you struggling about, it's because students are often missing the logic. And and they all took 1090, but I maintain, you know, it's so formal that I'm not sure anybody learns anything. So, so I haven't taught it myself recently, I'm going to throw in a little logic here. All right? So this precondition and code give post condition. I need to just stress a little bit what that means, right? And one usually thinks about um, output by theta as a, this cause and effect, right? They have this true base true. But in general, there, there might not be a causality there, right? All, what it, all it means really is um, it's, a, it's a truth table, right? Oops. Right? The truth table that says it's not the case that um, alpha is true and beta is false. Right? It's just that's when you break the contract. Right? Any other time is good. Right? So the only way you can break the contract is that the precondition's true, you do the code, and the postcondition's not true. Right? So so for example, if you, if you always happen to give the right answer, it doesn't matter how you got it. Good. Right? If the precondition is never met. Right. All right. So this is just saying, uh, don't try to think about an entire algorithm, entire computation at once, right? Because it can be really quite confusing, and you'll get you'll get frustrated, you'll, you'll panic, and you'll frown. Right. So really, here, let me give you a little swimming lesson. There's really not any unless you're in really cold water for, for days. There's no reason to drown. Right? You do a little you calm, you do a little uh, um, dead man's love, you come up. You can be fine for months. Well, maybe not. But, but anyway, don't panic. The key is not to panic. So we're going to do one step at a time, right? Or at least the next step, which for me is a quote from, from AA, if you know Alcoholics Anonymous. So you know, don't try to be uh, not to be an alcoholic for the rest of your life. Just today, just just do today, right? Don't drown it. So don't drown it. So. All right. So, um, all right, here's a block of code, and we're going to work on understanding. I mean, this is actions, right? A statement and an action statement. I told you we weren't doing them, right? So now I'm thinking about what we're going to do instead. How are we going to do this in a way that we feel is good? Right? What's the definition of works? Well, we'll put some assertion 
Assertions are a picture, right? So assertion is a place in the code where we'll pause there and the assertion will state something that's true about your data structure. Right? You have some big data structure and you draw a picture of it. So when you have the zero assertion, the assertion in this case is simply an X is an integer. Right? And at the bottom, the assertion is simply that X is even. Right? So there's kind of picture, right? There's no action, this is a statement. Right? And so what we need um, if so if at the beginning of the block the assertion is true and you execute the code, then at the end the end needs to be true, right? And at the beginning it's not true, then it doesn't right, you should give an error message, right? That's usually if you're running a program and a little error message comes up. Because there was some assertion that got checked and it wasn't true. It was supposed to be true. All right, everybody good so far? We're starting slow so you don't panic. All right, so this is saying assertion zero is true. We do this code, we get assertion one. Um, so to do deduction, you might remember deduction is you, how do you prove that the left hand side, if it's true, you give the right hand side? Well, you first assume the left hand side is true, right? And then you go through and you prove the right hand side, and then you, you conclude. Everybody remember that? And uh, let's move my little face up there, as pretty as it is. Let's put it over. We'll move it around. Maybe we can even close it. I don't know. Smaller, at least. All right. So, how do we know that the last time is true? Right, here I assume it. How do you know it's true? Hmm? Yeah. Well, why can I assert it? Who gave me the power to assert? Yeah. Well, how is this not true? Is my contract filled when the when the precondition is not true? What happens if if I'm your boss and I gave you 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 told me you got this code that worked? I gave you an input, and the input doesn't meet the precondition. What do we expect from your code? Um, nothing. So is your contract fulfilled? Okay. Yeah, your contract is fulfilled, right? Alpha implies beta. It's true if alpha is false, right? So, so I like to think about this is by cases. There's two cases. If alpha is false, then we're done, right? So in the second case, alpha is true, and that's when we have to do some work, right? So you can assume here, we're saying there's two cases, and the one case comes to work, right? So now I'll assume we're doing this thing. All right, all right, that's the case we're considering. We've got another little thing sitting here, all these things floating around. Maybe I won't like doing, 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 um, Zoom, we might have to figure out how to do other recordings. All right. All right, so what I like to do is you're allowed to make the assumptions that are written down in your assumption thing, but you're not allowed to make any other assumptions, right? So the way I say it, I often tell a story because I talk about fairy godmothers and, and uh, things to make, try to make this more and more interesting. And one of the stories is, when we fly in from Mars, we land here, the only assurance we have is that the precondition is true. You know, the zero is true. And that's all you have. And so don't think I know something else. Right? Because you don't. Right? So that's what I mean by you fly in from Mars, all you know it's true. Right? And we're doing cases. So now there are two cases again. There's the case, it's an if statement. So there's a case where the if change is true and the if is false, and you execute this as true. 
right? So we're going to do, we're going to consider the two cases, right? The goal is to prove, oh, this is how you do cases in general, right? In general, you do, you try and prove some gamma. They're true cases, either alpha is true or beta is true, right? In this case, the gamma, that's that one there, is that your, your block of code's working, right? And we're trying to prove the block of code's working. And either we follow path alpha or alpha beta. So in case one, we assume alpha and we prove gamma, right? And in the other, we assume beta and we prove gamma. Right, does that make sense? And then we conclude the gamma is true. Right, so let's do that. Um, right, we assume uh, our goal is to prove assertion one's true. Right, so we, we, we look at the code, we see there are two paths. Right, so here we're proving that really the code only has two paths. Right, right, so consider the first path. Well, in the first path, um, you know, we prove that it's true when you follow that path. And I don't remember if we had slides about it, but you can imagine if uh, in the first path, the, the if is true, which says that x is odd, so you, you bounce. Um, oh, so then you add one to it, which makes it even. And so then we're, then we're down here in the and in the other case, right, in the other case, uh, the if is not true, right? So that means x is even because we knew x is an integer. And so then you don't add anything to it and it's still even, right? Everybody get these two cases? Right, so this, this was our first math that I said. You write down on the left hand side of the things that we know, right? We know assertion zero tells us that x, x is, is an integer. And um, why do I have an x zero there? Well, here I'm meaning the value of x when I'm at line zero, right? The value of x when I'm at line zero is, is integer. And then we're going to do path, so that means that the if was positive, so x zero is, is odd. The code, the code, um, we're going to talk about code versus math later, right? But you can see this made it, if it was code, x equals x plus one. Is that true? x equals x plus one? No, x doesn't equal x plus one, right? This is the assignment stage. What's true is that the new value of x is the old value of x plus one, right? So then from these, right, here we fly into NARS, we know that's true, uh, right? From the case, we know that's true, right? Everybody kind of sort of said this already, but people are kind of following this, right? We know that we're doing the code, so we get that relationship, and that gives us citizenship. Yeah? Yeah, so Mars is it, just saying clear out any preconceptions, anything else you have in your brain, right? Because you may be writing this little piece of code that you're making this worse, and you might think, well, I know that X is five. Right? And because you write in the previous code. So I'm saying forget that. Forget that you believe X should be fine. Right? All you know, if you're standing at assertion zero, all you know is that X is is uh, uh is even. Whichever is an integer, right? So the, the flying it from Mars is is putting yourself in a different mindset, saying I just arrived, I forget everything I know, all I know is the internet. Right? Does that make sense? Right? So it's it's kind of working through what we know. Right? And then this is saying, why do we know the guys on the left hand side? Right? We know um, our goal is to prove that, right? So here 
Did you follow those steps, everybody? Uh, um, this is doing the other side, right? We 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 know we're assuming alpha the, the the zero statement is true, right? We're assuming, right? We why because we flew in from Mars, and thus we assumed it was true, right? Why do I I assume this is because we're doing we're doing code B, so we we dropped out of that, right? Right. And why is my x1 equal to my x0? It's because we did no code, right? All right, so now, now I'm going to string together um, r, some number r of these ifs and else's, right? And, and now we can think about each path through this. So everybody think how many paths are there to do this code? You have two choices for the first if, right? Two choices for the second if, for the third if. To the end, exactly. Exactly, everybody see that? Because it's two choices, two choices, two choices, right? Two in the R comment. Do we want to check them all? No. Why? Why don't we want to check them all? Because we're lazy, right? You were afraid to say that. I'm not proud. I'm willing to say it. All right? Right? There's too many paths and we're lazy, right? So we're going to break it up into smaller assertions. Right? And uh, so the first step is to say, um, for the first block, we're going to have two cases, right? The case, well, what the zero assertion zero is true and the condition one's true, and we execute this first code, then we need this, this next assertion to be true. Right, everybody follow that? And then the next one, is assertion zero is true this condition's false we execute the second code and then we get the assertion one right everybody see that and so what we did is we proved that we can get from assertion one to zero to assertion one right and so we did that and then we did and then we do that r times right so instead of shooting the r no proofs Right, and we only have two times our little proofs, right? Which is, you hope you know is better, right? All right, so when you do all of these, um, oh yeah, so it's just an obvious statement. It's the end of one, it's the beginning of the next, right? So. Here, we, we, we tag them together. Now, you remember logic. Which, which thing of logic are we going to use now? Alpha plus beta, beta plus gamma, and transitivity. Right? I can get from here to there, I can get from there to there, I can get, you know. So by transitivity, I can get all the way right does that make sense right. so here's just a, a really simple example right we we start with uh we start that we have three numbers and we have to get that our first assertion is that M is the maximum of the set containing only the first number, right? And then we have to prove that if M is the maximum of the first number, of the first number and we do that block of code, right? We, we look at the second, we compare it to the second number, right? And if, if the second number is bigger, then that's going to be our new M. Everybody kind of see the two cases? Right, everybody with me here? 
And so, so that's our code, right? People buy that? All right. So now we're moving up to loops, right? So this has a loop, and we're going to do a similar thing as we did with the S, right? So uh, what we want to prove is that if we find for Mars and the precondition is true, and you execute this block of code, how many times around you go? I don't know. Some number of times. Then, when you get to the bottom, if you get to the bottom, right, the post condition will be true. Everybody got that? So, how many paths are there to check? You might go around no time, or one time, or two times, or three times. How many times? I don't know what it is here. Yeah, I know, I know you're better. But, but I don't know how many times I'm going to go around, right? So I could argue that there are an infinite number of paths to check, right? I could go around once or twice or three times, right? Infinite number. Um, we're not doing limits here. If in, yeah, if it approaches infinity, we go home and we, we reboot your computer. But yeah, all right, so here's all these paths, right? Infinite number of paths, right? So is there a faster way, right? Then we're gonna break it up with assertions. So here's our assertion, right? So our precondition, if we start with, oh yeah, there's our end. Yeah, but here's what he was doing. He was a fine salient for Mars, right? That was an example. He suddenly thought he was smarter than, you know, he was jumping in and saying, oh, this code's going to go around n times, so is there an n times stuff, right? But we can't really look at the code yet. Our goal is to prove that the code works. The problem with assuming the code goes around n times is you're making an assumption that it works sort of before you prove Anyway, you're right, it goes around n times, but all right, so we have n numbers. Uh, what do we need at the bottom? We need to know the maximum. So what are we going to know in the middle? Well, in the middle of the computation, we've sort of done a middle of the work, right? We, we've looked at, we're going to have some i, and we've looked at the first i values. And what we have stored in our data structure is the value m, and the claim is that m is the biggest of the first i. Right? And so this is a picture about your data structure. Right? Your data structure has the original a, or array, it has the value i, it has the value m. Here's the relationship between m and i. All right? All right. All right, so now we're going to break it up into the subpaths that's just gonna travel from one assertion to the other. All right, we're gonna do that, we're gonna do that, we're gonna do that, right? All right, three subpaths. All right, so uh, what is our assertion? They're useful for thinking about, sometimes PowerPoint does these weird things where it puts out some before, I, I never understood PowerPoint. Right, but why do we do it? Why do we do assertions? Well. They're useful for developing algorithms. They're useful for talking about algorithms on the subway, right? If I'm compiling you an algorithm, the first thing I'm going to do is tell you the pre and post condition, and this is how you the loop right? So how to how to know your algorithm works? Uh, it's a statement or a picture about the current state of your machine, um, about you know whether your bank account is negative or not. Um, make sure that we get this lost, right? So, so the, the, the point is that the assertion should be true if you're at this line of, of, of the code, the assertion, as soon as the precondition was true, because then everything's off, then your assertion should always be true when you get there, no matter how you get there, right? Whatever, no matter what path, no matter what the input is, that meets the precondition, 
no matter what path you take, it should be true. Uh, I'm not sure why we left the previous example. Um, probably because the slides are in the wrong order. Um, assertion, you can think about it as a, as a function from your data structure to yes and no, right? Your data structure has the right property to say yes. It doesn't have the right property to say no. Um, a I guess a computational that the current state tells you, you know, what line of code am I on? All the values, internal values, everything you need to know, right? I get thrown in the chair. So this is the flying from Mars bit, right? You fly from Mars. What do you need to know about the present state to be able to continue, right? Um, you shouldn't have to be worrying about the past. So what do I need to know about the present to be able to know that I'm on the right path that I can move forward, right? So here's a, an example of a, of a current state, right? Tell you the values of your variable, tell you which line you're on. And then assertion might be right that something is odd or right x is odd. Right. So in this case, uh, x is odd, and in this right, in this case, x is not odd. Right. So you can see how it's a, it's a function. So all right, don't be what happened to our other example? Did we lose those slides? We might have lost them. We'll see, maybe they'll come up later. All right. So don't be afraid by by assertion, all right? So here's my contract to do is when I want you to have an assertion and I want you to use the assertions in a certain way, you will have to do them or you will fail, right? That's the one side, that's the animal side of the contract. So this side of the contract how do you write this assertion down? Right? You can write it down in formal mathematics, you can write it in a index sentence, you can draw a little picture, right? I recommend you have time to do a bunch of them because what you have to do is you have to convince the whoever's marking it that you know what your assertion is, right? But it doesn't have to be formal math, all right? All right, it can be a picture. Um, Still want to know what happened to the previous slides. They're over here. Here they are. I knew they were somewhere. All right, well, I moved things around and they got moved. Um, what else we got in here? Uh, these, somehow these got in here. Um, We'll just finish these. We'll do these in order, and then I'll, I'll, I'll rearrange them. So when you see the slides next, they'll probably be moved. All right. So here's 